What's up, guys? Uh, I wanted to talk about a couple of different things, but I'm going to kind of lump uh, several things in, in one video uh, real quick. It's, I'm not going to call this an I told you so video, but there's a lot of things that I've been talking about. And if you do follow me and you've seen my past videos, uh, and you, if you've paid attention, you will see things that I've talked about. And it's going to be pretty difficult to deny that I was pretty much on point, right? And I'm not here to tell you I told you so or that I, I'm not Nostradamus. I'm not saying that everything I say comes true. But I do think that a lot of the things I talk about end up being factual, okay? And yeah, some of this is still my opinion. And there's going to be people who still have a different opinion. And that's, that's fine. But the first thing I'm going to talk about was that abomination that they called an Xfinity race yesterday, okay, with the restrictive play package and all that stuff. I told you guys that this is going to be horrible if they want to try to push this forward in, uh, in other, at other tracks and all kinds of stuff. After the All-Star race, there was a lot of people that felt, oh my God, this is exciting, it's awesome, it's great. Uh, there were a couple people online who were like, this is going to save NASCAR. And I fucking said, hell to the fucking no. I told you guys, this is not going to work. It, I, you don't know how hard I fought not to fall completely unconscious, asleep, watching that race. These long conga lines. And you can't make a pass without help. It's a manipulated form of racing. I, this is why I hate restrictor plate racing. There's so much manipulation by way of engineering that dry, there's only one way that you can possibly move forward with help with the draft. And if you don't have other people help or things open up for you at the right time, there's nothing you can do. To me, that's not racing. I thought we were headed in a different direction. I thought we were trying to make these cars harder to drive so that the driver ability becomes more of a premium and out front so that the crew chief and, and the crews and making the, pit, the adjustments during the race, that this actually matters. That tire fall off matters. These are the things that should decide a race. This manipulated, engineered form of racing where you are stuck in a pack and if you get out of that line, you're fucked. It's horrible. And I don't understand what people find entertain, uh, entertaining about restrictor plate racing. And I know it's sacrilegious to badmouth the Daytona 500 and it's an iconic race and, and that's fine. I can accept that because it's just a handful of races here and there and it's part of the the sport i get it i'm not saying just get rid of it but to introduce this garbage to other tracks i warned you guys after the all-star race you're looking at a test tube it's not going to give you the the reality of of, of what it would be like to have this at other tracks in a full-blown race mind you this is an Xfinity race, which is a lot shorter than a cup race. And it was a, a fucking nightmare snooze fest. It was boring. And every time Michael Waltrip kept telling me and the audience how great and exciting this racing was while this race was occurring, and I'm fighting to stay awake, it's an insult to me as a viewer. Okay, now... Maybe he's doing NASCAR's bidding. Maybe because I do think that NASCAR doesn't want certain people to say the truth about what's happening. And I'm sure that maybe they kind of, you know, maybe not straight out told drivers, but like mind what you say about this race. Because I got to I got to believe that at least half of these drivers out there are just like, what the fuck is this? Where are we going? What what are we doing? It was a horrible race. Now, I'm sure there's a handful of people out there who say they loved it. 
they want more of this because at the end of the day this is just my opinion but be honest what's so exciting about watching a conga line of cars lap after lap it's it's horrible now th there were moments of excitement sprinkled in through the race but those moments of excitement do not justify a three-hour race that you sit through which you saw how embarrassingly empty those stands were yes the weather was terrible but every week these races are empty and NASCAR if they don't do something about this NASCAR is in, in serious pr trouble now here's another problem that is an ongoing issue I've talked about NASCAR really needs to fucking just end this fucking bullshit with letting cup drivers come and just race in these lower series you don't see major league players on their off days going to the minor leagues and playing the only reason these fucking racers do this is to pad their fucking wins and to and for the easy paycheck and it it doesn't do anything for the racing years ago we were told that it's going to put people in the stands that these other Xfinity drivers and truck drivers, they want to race against the best. Yeah, they do want to race the best, but not in the equipment they're fucking driving in. There is a huge disparity between these Gibbs cars, these Penske cars, all these cars that Harvick, Kyle Busch, Keselowski, Logano, Hamlin, uh, Larson, these guys, they come to these lower series and they got the by far the best equipment how is this good for the sport who wants to sit there and watch these kids trying to make a name for themselves talented as they may be getting spanked every week NASCAR needs to put an end to this shit and they're not putting people in the stands the stands are fucking bone dry empty and the the uh, ratings on TV are not doing well either and every time Michael Waltrip told me how exciting and great this racing was yesterday, this pack racing, I wanted to kick the fucking TV screen. It's an insult. It was an abomination. I cannot sit through another fucking race like that. And I forced myself to watch it because I wanted to make sure, like, am I wrong? Is this going to work? Everybody else seems excited about this shit after the All-Star race. And I'm always open, you know, like, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I'm, you know, I'm missing something. And I, I was not. There's nobody that's going to fucking sell me on this shit. It's horrible. And you know what? The ratings and the empty stands, uh, every week, it's the same fucking thing. Here's another thing NASCAR needs to do. They need to break up the schedule where they have multiple series at the same track on the same weekend you shouldn't have that because any local folks that want to come out on the weekend to watch a race if if all three series or or xfinity and cup is at the same track on the same weekend they're going to want to go see the cup race right if they can't catch both which a lot of people don't so if they have a choice they're going to go with the cup and that hurts the Xfinity race. It also hurts, I think, the, 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 the track. I mean, think of it. Let's say you've got truck, Xfinity, and Cup. Instead of having them at the same weekend at, let's say, Pocono or, Do or Dover or Michigan, just have the Cup this week and then schedule it so that maybe a couple of weeks from now, Xfinity's there. But they're the only game in town. So people that want to go out it's only Xfinity this weekend. Hell, I would go check it out. But if you if you pack these races together, they're all going to gravitate towards the cup. Also, it's better for these tracks. You know, now they got more weekends that there's action. And if you could build a whole weekend around a truck race or an Xfinity race, I think you can get more people to come to the track on a particular weekend. You may, you may have more people just at, in the stands. Also, these, you know, you're sharing the spotlight. 
with with the with the Cup Series. That's not good. You want these trucks and Xfinity Series to have their own personality, their own character. Get these fucking Cup drivers out of there. I'm sick and tired of it. There, it's it's horrible. It stinks up the show. And if NASCAR doesn't put an end to it, they're they're shooting themselves in the foot. This idea that the cup drivers in these lower series is selling tickets is bullshit. It's already been proven wrong. And just watch a race on TV and you see these empty stands. Where are all these excited people that are coming to watch Kyle Busch? Nobody wants to watch Kyle Busch lap half the field. And he's only there to pad his fucking stats. So we get to hear about how many uh, Xfinity wins he has. Not fucking impressed. I'm sorry. Not taking anything away. These are the greatest drivers in the world. So I don't want to hear anybody saying I'm a quote-unquote hater. I'm not a fucking hater. But these drivers, that's this is not competition for them. Now, if you want to come down and trade your ride with one of these other poor kids who are driving for some fucking third, lower tier team, I'll watch that. And let, let them drive one of these Gibbs cars. Let's see what happens. Let's see how impressive you are. This is what I fucking hate about it. And there is a disparity. And, and, and NASCAR needs to recognize that. Put an end to this shit. Cup drivers, stay in your lane. Xfinity, stay in your lane. Truck, in your lane. I don't want to see these top level cup drivers come down and spank these kids. It's not fun to watch. It does nothing for the sport. And you're choking the life out of these lower series because they have no personality. You know, you want these series to be about these younger drivers trying to make a name for themselves. So, that's all I'm going to say about that. The fucking, the plate racing is atrocious. Now, I hope NASCAR looked at yesterday's race. And I hope they didn't get the wrong idea. I hope that they looked at it and said, this is not good. We don't need more of this. We need less. How about lowering the fucking rear spoiler? Okay. Now, I know they're afraid of, they don't want these cars going beyond a certain speed for safety. Well, then, I'm okay with using a restrictor plate to, to keep the, you know, the top speed down, maybe. Or whatever it is you can do to, to slow the car down to whatever you they deem necessary. I'm okay with that. But that huge spoiler, and then you're driving around almost wide open, lap after lap, in a conga line, that's not good. I want the car to be harder to handle. Maybe a maybe a lower spoiler in the rear will, will make the car real tail happy. You're not going to be able to keep your foot in the gas. This is where driver ability and the ability to work on the race car for the teams, where, where that comes in and plays a factor. This bullshit of a fucking line of 20 cars just in a row going lap after lap like at Daytona and Talladega, we don't need more of that. So NASCAR... I hope they just saw that and said, no more. I didn't like hearing Michael Waltrip repeat throughout the telecast how great this racing was when we all know it was atrocious. That's enough of that. And I told you guys, this shit is not going to work. Now, could you imagine that in a cup race that's even longer, four or 500 miles of that garbage? No, thank you. So... That's it for that. I think I could say I told you so. That's just my opinion. The other little I told you so, this goes a little further back. When I've talked about the gaming industry and where it's headed, and I've been warning people for the longest time about the microtransactions and the DLC and all this other bullshit, and I talked about recently, you know, how even Rockstar now, they took, they delayed the game for a fucking year. Uh... I'm not saying it, they didn't polish the game at all, but this whole idea that it needed a fucking year of polish was bullshit. I think that they had a lot of microtransaction bullshit implemented into the game, and they needed to get it out and come up with a new way to kind of get that money. After what happened with Battlefront and EA and all the backlash they, they took for all the bullshit they pulled with all the loot crates and loot boxes and all this other bullshit... That shit did definitely play a role, and it caused Rockstar to delay the game. That's my belief, 
and I'm and I think you as you can see all this other fucking pre uh, ordering bullshit all these packages now that they, they're even taking missions for the for the for the not multiplayer but the actual story mode that if you don't pre order a special edition or something you're not going to get to play that mission and I've been warning people about this shit and it's happening another thing Re just, uh, I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before, but EA at the e E3 uh, conference, it's getting killed by a lot of people, rightfully so, because it was a, a another boring nothing, uh, big nothing burger. But not only that, they were bragging about how great it would be for people to be in a subscription service. And I don't, if you've seen, I don't remember which video I did, but I was talking about the gaming industry, and I said clearly that we're going to reach a point where somebody, some developer, some big publisher is going to say, instead of selling games, we're going to just rent them. We can make more money that way. You will never own certain games. You can't physically own them. You can only rent and they, they can make money that way. And it's going to be available only through subscription. They're already pushing this. And they literally told you how great it is to be a subscriber to a service. Which is a slap in the face. This is more insulting shit. This is how bad it is that they feel they can tell you right to your face. That here's a pile of shit in a box. You're going to love it. And tell you there's a pile of shit in this box. And that's what they're doing. And this jerk off from EA is standing there. And he's telling everyone how wonderful it's going to be when you join their subscription service. And you can play all these games. But you don't own these games. It's going to be like Netflix for games. And I fucking told you guys this was coming. And it's coming. This is what they're going to start doing. This is why they also push digital downloads they don't really want people buying hard copies of games anymore and it just makes it easier to do all this stuff they're gonna have more control of the content and you're really not gonna own anything there's gonna it's gonna come and this is a huge step in that direction so again I don't want to be that I told you so guy but I've been fucking talking about this for a long time those of you who do follow me and, and really listen to what I say, the reason I'm, I'm doing this and I'm telling you, I fucking told you, is so you realize that I, I'm not just talking out my fucking ass. You know, I'm a very observant of what's happening and I use logic. And I know how these fucking people think. This is why I've been warning people. You can't support, you know... I remember years ago, I, I, I'm warning people, don't buy DLC, it's fucking bullshit. These skins, and people are like, eh, it's just $3.99 or $5.99, and I like it. And I get some cool fucking little trinkets. And I'm like, just because you can afford something doesn't mean it's good to spend the money. You are supporting a terrible business model that's only going to get worse. And after that, we started seeing microtransactions and loot crates and boxes and all this stuff that we've been seeing these past couple of years. It's not going to end there. And I told you guys, it's, there's going to come a time where a developer or a publisher is going to say, fuck this, we're not selling these games, we're going to rent them. And we're going to make people subscribe to a subscription service and that's how they're going to play the game. Could you imagine Grand Theft Auto V? If it was just available as a subscription. Now, I've been playing that game since it came out. And you're paying a monthly fee to play this game? You know, every game's not going to... It's not going to work as a business model because... You know, but the ones that do will make up for that. And now you got EA and they're creating this subscription service where they can put everything under their umbrella in this service like a Netflix and you're just gonna be pretty much renting games like not renting but you're paying a subscription fee for access to play these games 
you're no longer going to be able to own this stuff. It's not there yet, but they're pushing it. And this fucking douchebag at EA spent a large part of his time on stage telling people how great it is to be a subscriber to something. I don't want to fucking subscribe to something. I want to own it. Sell me the fucking game. If it's a good game, I'll, I'll definitely probably buy the next game. This is the way it used to be. I would have more respect for, for these developers if, and publishers if they just said, you know what? We're, instead of $60 for this game, we're going to charge 70 And yeah, it's a little more money, but you get everything this game has to offer. There's nothing hidden. No DLC. No fucking microtransaction bullshit. Nothing. You will own the game. It's yours. And everything we created for this game, nothing's going to be locked out. All the extra skins and, and weapons and trinkets, whatever the fuck it is, it's all included. Just like it used to be when you had to earn certain your way through a certain game. And it gave you, it was a bigger payoff. You felt a bigger sense of accomplishment. But now they just, if you're willing to pay a little extra, you just get stuff. And it gives you an unfair advantage over other players if it's on online multiplayer. This is what we're seeing. Because these people are greedy. This is the, they're this is by their nature. They're there to make money. And if you as a consumer don't hold a, a hard line and let them know, I'm not paying for this. They're going to continue to push that line. They're going to push forward. And now you got EA pushing this subscription service. You think these other developers and publishers aren't going to look at that and say, we can do this too? It's th the gaming industry is dying, and I've been talking about this for a long time. And I fucking said it. I said it. There's going to come a time where they're going to come out and they're going to be like, instead of selling you a game, they're just going to make it available as a subscription, rental, or something. So, that's it. That's that. Those are my thoughts on the Xfinity race, this abomination they call plate racing. Uh, all the other issues going on and the gaming industry where it's headed and you can see it you know open your eyes you got to be smarter about what you support this is why I don't buy DLC unless it's really something meaningful and extra that doesn't feel like it was stripped out from the original game I did buy the last NASCAR heat to uh, DLC because, yeah, it was a 2018 update. It came with the Roval, the Charlotte Roval track and stuff. And I thought for the price, I, I was okay with it. Okay? But I'm very, very selective about the type of DLC I buy. And I don't believe in just supporting a bad business model. This is what I try to convey to people. You're free to spend your money any way you want. But remember that you're responsible for the where the industry's headed that's on you because you told them it's okay when you put microtransactions and loop crates and boxes I'm gonna buy that stuff well they're making a shitload of money off of it why would you think they're not that they're gonna stop there and be satisfied it's not gonna stop there it just keeps moving to where greed dictates so that's all I have to say. What do you guys think? And hopefully we get some some other news. Uh, I guess we'll have to wait for the Daytona race in July to hear about the next NASCAR game. Let's see what happens then. So you guys have a good one. I look forward to your comments.